know what I mean? Welcome to Ernest Roulette, the only Ernest podcast with a wheel. Oh, hey guys. Can I be on your show? Yeah, sure. Here's your hat. I hope it lands on goes to jail again. Ernest, scared stupid. Jack, how do you pronounce your last name? I, I want to hear you try first. Hackard? Let's see if that's right. <laughs> okay, okay. Are you ready, Freddy? Rolling. Yep. Welcome to Ernest Roulette, episode five. We are joined by special guest Jack Packard. That's it, right. It is Packard. Wow, you got it in one. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're going to discuss Ernest Scared Stupid. Jack, what the hell are you doing here? I'm a big fan of your video podcast on Ernest movies, and I asked if I could come here, and you said yes. That was a mistake. Nice. Jack doesn't live down the street. Jack yeah. flew in. Mm -hmm. From where was it? From from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, all the way from the Midwest to to the to the shiny East Coast. Nice. Boston has been great. I've only been mugged twelve times, but I feel <laughs> like I'm getting the hang of it. This episode proves that we didn't shoot every episode in one day. <laughs> We're in like month two of producing Ernest Roulette, and the wheel today landed on Ernest Scared Stupid. From Touchstone Pictures, first there was Jason, then there was Freddy. Now, terror has a new name. <laughs> Ernest Scared Stupid, an all-new movie rated PG. Starts Friday, October 11th at a theater near you. I think Ernest Scared Stupid is probably the fan favorite. It, it's weird. It varies. I, I couldn't tell you. I think it's it's kind of split almost evenly up maybe among the movies, the, the Disney movies, the four. Mm. And it probably depends. If you ask people right now in October, they'd say Scared Stupid, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, ask around Christmas, they might be uh, more charitable towards Rides Christmas. again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rides again. <laughs> no. Um, so anyway, yeah. We all watched it within the last week. I watched it twice in the last week with my sister. Mm-hmm. Did you, did you watch it solo? I uh, watched it last night. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Jack, you watched it with your kids. I watched it with my children. I wanted to see how modern day kids would feel about uh, Ernest's absurdity. And, and they loved it. How old is your oldest? A ten. I got a ten and a seven. So that, this movie predates your ten-year-old by what, like 18? <laughs> <Six>, 40 years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so just across the board, what is everyone's relationship with Ernest Scared Stupid? What was the first time you experienced the movie? Just, we'll go across. Oh, I can't remember exactly. I don't know. Did it used to show on TV? Or oh, yeah. I'm sure we we rented it a lot. We grew up. We really liked Ernest, but this was definitely the most vivid memory. I think this is prior to starting the show. This was the only one that I had rewatched in the last ten years. But you ran. I definitely never rented it, but it was on television a couple of times. Uh, like so many things from the early '90s, I don't have a really strong timeline. I haven't put the batteries back on my old Palm Pilot to like check my schedule. But my strongest, my gut, gut memory, my emotional memory is finding it genuinely scary and choosing to like change the channel. As a child, a four or five year old, honestly being scared. Um, Earnestly being scared. Uh, Since, yeah. Stupid. Uh, similar, I did not get to see this in theaters. It was the second to last Ernest movie put in theaters. Mm -hmm. Rides Again was in theaters for like a day. I don't think it was in Massachusetts. Um, so I saw it on cable a lot. I don't think we ever rented it. I think it was on the Disney Channel and like TNT a lot. I watched it with my sister a lot growing up. She was a year younger than me. Um, we probably saw this like five, six times when we were kids. And um, I haven't really revisited it since. Watching it last week was the first time I've seen it all the way through in probably 22 years. And, and me as well. It's, it's been a while. This was... Uh, all the Ernest movies in my house were in almost constant rotation. For some reason, you know, because they were family friendly, because they were goofball comedies, we just, we liked them. And it's it's crazy as an adult watching this one and just seeing how little the segments are. You know, the, the building the treehouse segment as a kid was the whole movie. Like, oh, they built those contraptions, but yeah. here it's two minutes. It was, like, it was like a Rocky montage in your mind's eye, but when you watch it, it's like four shots. Exactly. It's nothing. And so, you know, like... Uh, this was by far my favorite. Uh, I, I can remember every bit uh, after rewatching it, and uh, uh, I don't know where this thought started. So <laughs> you liked it. Yeah. I, I liked it. I still like it. 
Uh, I think uh, I think it's it's a beautiful movie. This one's I think a little more squarely aimed at kids than than even goes to uh, goes to camp. Yeah, absolutely. I think in the wake of goes to jail, which made a little less money than Christmas, mm-hmm. um, and I, I think Cherry and the rest of the Ernest movie players decided let's let's go back to kids. There were no kids in Ernest goes to jail. I don't think there's a single child in that whole movie. No, yeah. You know, there's something to be said for the fact that. They went for Christmas because, but there's plenty of competition for things on television at Christmas time, things for rental at Christmas time. When it comes to Halloween, a lot of it's rated R, a lot of it's not for kids. Mm-hmm. There's just less competition. Kid centric Halloween movies had sort of fallen out of fashion by 1991. Like you, you had things like Little Monsters and Monster Squad. You go all the way back to Scooby Doo, but. Uh, no. But those weren't really like theatrical yeah. releases. But the same year Adam's Family came out, which yes. was. Ah. More of a game changer, I'd, I'd say. Yes. To go back to what Ryan got into with it being actually scary for kids, that's kind of that's one of the best things about this movie, I think, is that it's sort of like a like the training wheels equivalent of a horror film for kids, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Definitely. Yeah, it's a yeah. slasher movie for kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a slasher movie that is not afraid to put its monster right out front. Yeah. That troll is bright and in your face right from the get-go. And the troll, they show the troll in daylight, walking it, it, around, and I think they knew like how good, it's, like, it's a pretty good costume. Right? I think it looks better in daylight. It looks great. Yeah. It looks great. Which is usually like the inverse. Like, yeah. like they, yeah. the first time you really see it when it's getting that kid, that for the first victim, I think his name's Nick, uh, they put a bit of shadow across his nose and everything. His nose is. He has two noses, by the yeah. way, which I never noticed until this viewing. Nose to a lot of lot of boogers. The boogers. That's the key. The yeah. boogers is the key to what makes this monster look great because he's constantly dripping. Yeah. And it's in his beard and it's in his teeth. It's yeah. a great touch. Yeah. Go. Quintessential. And it's probably there just so Ernest can go. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> From the word go in this movie, it's pretty fun out of the gate. That opening the opening theme song. It's yeah, that used to be my ringtone. <laughs> That's great. It's a good theme song. Um, it's just Jim Varney pulling faces and public domain old black and white movies. The woman who animated the titles for the previous movies, like that awesome James Bond one for Ernest Goes to Jail and yeah. so forth, directed the opening of this, so she actually did all the staging and shooting for that, Like she because she knew what footage she needed to go with the stock footage. Um, the song, I, what's it called? Is it just called the Ernest Scared Stupid theme? Probably. I think so. <laughs> is, uh, what else are you going to call it? You know, just a word to the wise, if you're watching this before Halloween and you're making your Halloween playlist and you've already put Thriller and the Ghostbusters theme and another version of Thriller on your playlist, mm-hmm. put on this song. I can't guarantee that it's on Spotify if that's what you're using. For <laughs> <laughs> just, we'll just put it on Dropbox and put a link in there. <laughs> oh, everybody's ears will perk up. Yeah. The you know the one the the one criticism I will have of the opening credits is I think it makes some earnest assumptions. Uh, uh, like I, I said earlier, uh, I watched this movie with my children who had never seen an Ernest movie before. Who's that? Huh? No, that's is that what they were asking. Like the sorry, uh, the, oh. the, were the kids like, "Who's this dude?" <laughs> the, oh, that's exactly what they said. And then you know, like they liked the faces at first, but it just went on a little too long. Eventually, it got to the point where the kids are like, "Is this it? Is this the whole movie? <laughs> is this what's happening in this oh, movie?" Oh no! It, yeah, it's were insane. movies really this different back then? Exactly. Like <laughs> oh. there was that, and you know, eventually we we got into the olden times. But there was a, a moment where everyone was concerned. I love imagining it's 1991. Mom and dad are bringing the kids into the theater to watch Ernest. They're a few minutes late, and this is already happening. And like they're just seeing Varney mug on camera, <laughs> looking around like wacky green lights. And mom and dad are like, "All right." Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even give me the opening credits. I love the idea of seeing that face on the big screen. Mm-hmm. I, I've, and I've I never wish seen I could it. go back and do it. Yeah. Oh, man. Back to basics. It's 1991. Ernest is back in theaters. Finally. Pull up the Ernest map. He's in Missouri. Yep. Yeah. Which Ryerville, means, Missouri, which is not a real town. And right? it really wishes it was Salem, Massachusetts. Yes. That's too northern. It. It predates Hocus Pocus by two years, and it reeks of Hocus Pocus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like, down to, like, the scene where Ernest breaks into the high school and warns everybody, and everyone laughs at him, people thinking the troll is just someone in a costume. I guess that's very common in 
these Halloween fodder movies for kids. Uh, but what do we know about Briarville? It's not real. No, but what's what's going on in Briarville in the oh. fiction of the film? <laughs> Way back, <laughs> long time ago, uh, we see a young girl getting chased by a troll. The townspeople with their pitchforks and torches, they catch him in a net, they chain him up, they throw him in a hole, and uh, a priest, played by Jim Varney with a hairpiece and makeup. He looks great. He looks really fantastic. Good yeah, like Captain great. Ahab, yeah. wide-eyed, <laughs> never, a lot of pontificating from yeah. his pulpit. The most competent Varney has looked in a film. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but he's scary looking. He looks like someone who whips his kids. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they plant a tree over him. And they bury the troll in the hopes that no one will ever dig it up, which, uh, spoiler alert, ladies and gentlemen at home. <laughs> Ernest screws up. Oh, Ernest, yes. <laughs> this has a, a POV scene. It's, and it is, yeah, it's Evil Dead-esque. It's the troll. But that made me think, do you think the troll is a relative of Vern's? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's the only Trans other POV we have in, in the series. It's the only POV in this movie, and uh, it... Goes up against Ernest. Oof. Now, this isn't just any ordinary troll. But I, the <laughs> thing Sorry. about talking about this movie, the thing about this movie is that when you, when, you, when you make a Halloween movie or a horror film, there's like probably five buckets you pull from, like the vampire, a witch, a werewolf. Cherry and company just said troll. They went for trolls. No one's cornered the troll market yet. So you heard the word troll screamed like 50 times in this movie by... <laughs> Eartha Kitt, who's fantastic in the movie. She's great. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim, callous people, and, and and a lot of it is just people confusedly going, Troll, what the hell is Ernest talking about? <laughs> trolls. 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 But Trantor is this super troll. Who possesses what? Like he's like super strong, I guess. Like what? What's he got on people that should make us scared he, of him? He's, he's well, one, he's hideous. Yes, he's ugly. He's, he's hideous. Uh, he's strong. He's fast, and for some unknown reason, he has the power to imitate voices. Jenny, did you hear that? Yeah, it, it sounded like Elizabeth. She's not in. Over here, Kenny. Used to very That's creepy right. effect. Very creepy effect. Yeah. He's also like 200 years old, minimum. Yeah. And he's yeah. like four feet tall. So just like Eartha Kitt, not the height, the age. Oh, yeah. Eartha Kitt's apparently 200 years old. We'll get to that. <laughs> so cut to modern day after the troll's been buried. What's going on? The story of the troll being buried under the tree is being told by a young girl in class. The teacher. The teacher in the class, the same actress who played Dolores in Dr. Otto, and the judge in jail, and the animal control in Christmas yes. with the reindeer. That's bull. And we find out there's two bullies in class <laughs> who give her a heart. Now, we know they're bullies because... They look like bullies. They have oh, bullets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And this I is the first time we see when the teacher looks out the window, we see this preposterous dump truck setup with Ernest. Whose job is now a garbage man in Briarsville. <laughs> Again, uh, he's just getting all these car-based jobs. Well, he's back to driving. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's got he a driver's was, license back. Yeah. And he, I think he loses it in this one. He gets pulled over, like, twice by the police <laughs> for doing things he shouldn't do behind the wheel. Uh, he might not have a, a license at all, maybe. It's worth noting, in reality, which we're very far removed from, being a sanitation engineer, you, it's a difficult license to get. It's not <laughs> difficult like a propane tank truck. Maybe not in Briarsville. They wouldn't give it to Ernest. Maybe that's why they're using a fictional town, is because the mayor no town would agree to be portrayed as hiring Ernest. Yeah. I want to talk about the bullies for a minute. Yeah. The inciting incident in this movie with the bullies is Elizabeth is telling the story about a troll was in our town and we banished it under a tree. And one of the bullies goes, no, that didn't happen. Trolls aren't real. Trolls aren't stupid. real. And that's like his sin. The reports were supposed to be on the history of the town, not Nightmare on Troll Street. <laughs> That's what makes him the bad kid. And I'm watching it, and I wrote it out like, bullshit. The bullies are bullying against bullshit. <laughs> <But> from the <laughs> audience's perspective, we clearly know that trolls are real, yeah. and this kid is clearly being a dick. That kid should be commended as a hero, because he's like nine years old and he's a skeptic about trolls. <laughs> like, he's going to be president someday. The good kind. <laughs> the good guy. <laughs> the good guy. All right, so, all right, so Ernest is working for the sanitation department now, driving his truck. He's hanging out with Rimshot. Rimshot's back. Rimshot's yeah. back. This is maybe Rimshot. the only character that recurs in an Ernest movie. Chuck and Bobby. 
Uh, yeah, if you can call them characters. <laughs> Rimshot is in this one a little more, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. He's a little more important this time. He's oh, helping yeah. Ernest. He's, uh, he tries to kill Ernest. <laughs> He lost Twice. the dog Emmy to that guy who plays Eddie on Frasier. <laughs> but he put in a great performance. But, uh, you know, we've talked a little bit about um, Jim Carrey versus Jim Varney. Yep. Riding on his coattails a bit. David and and uh, uh, like three years later, the mask comes out and yep. he has got a Jack Russell Terrier dog. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. So now once we see Ernest working as a garbage man, he gets kind of it's like a repeat of goes to jail. Uh Electricity gets sentient and tries to kill him. No, the dog just hits a button. No, well, I mean, Ernest, yeah, there is Ernest is gonna get killed in the compressor in the back of his garbage truck, and he just unplugs it, which is the most sensible way to solve that problem. Like, oh, I'll unplug it, mm -hmm. and then the electricity arcs in comical fashion, so we can still read Varney's face. I think their VFX guy, probably the same guy they were, they've always worked with, and he said, you know what, I had so much fun doing all the electricity and Ernest goes to jail, please let me just draw a little bit more. Yeah, one more. their go-to gag, more. so he doesn't get magnetized this time, No, <laughs> which would have completely changed the movie. <laughs> if Ernest he just had superpowers. crushed into a cube. Yeah. Uh, and this In is which we did note that if you're looking for it, not to see the man behind the curtain too much, <laughs> you can see a guy with a hammer just <laughs> shove the cube out. Some teamster. And I... Actually, I have a really important question. Why a hammer? Yeah, it could have been a hoe. It kind of looked like a hoe. Or a I foot. I, I, I think it was a handheld. It I was just a hammer. Because you can see his hand holding it. It's a whole, it's a weird joke. Like, 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 like It's so, not a joke. It's a blooper. No, I'm talking about like the oh. whole, com like the conceit of a cube of trash with Ernest in it. Falling out the truck into the kids in front of the kids. Oh, to me, that's classic kid movie logic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is is the, the truck clearly uh, smushes all the trash into a perfect cube? Ernest is in there. He falls yeah. on his face. It's a little the, scary though, because he looks like he's in agony. Yeah. <laughs> this is where the kids meet up with Ernest, and it's established that the kids of the town know Ernest. Mm -hmm. The adults aren't crazy about Ernest hanging out with the kids. I, I, the sheriff of the town is the character I'm getting at here. The, Who is sheriff, the father of one of the boys. The sheriff seems kind of okay with it. I, I get the impression the sheriff knows Ernest is a decent guy and has given him a lot of chances. <laughs> like, does it, is that history established through context? Like, every I think everyone likes Ernest. He's the lovable goof. Except as he the mayor. Is. The mayor is not happy with him. Well, I mean. He, He's clearly has a stick up his butt. Yeah. 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 Um, but everyone likes Ernest, but he, there's some rules that he needs to follow. One, kids cannot go in the garbage truck because that's dangerous. Yep. Broken rule. Yep. Two, <laughs> kids cannot go into the spooky woods next to Eartha Kitt's house. Yeah. Broken rule number two. Boom. Yeah. And it's not because it's spooky woods. It's because it's Eartha Kitt's woods. Right. Because <laughs> right. no one, into, like, like the troll being real is something that's understood as phony. Mm -hmm. By the adults, right? Like only the kids believe in the troll. Yeah, and Eartha. And Eartha, of course, does. of course, Eartha. All right, so the kids build a, a lame haunted house. The bullies tear it down. Mm -hmm. The kids go to Ernest. Ernest goes to the spookiest, biggest, most clearly haunted tree. Yeah, they build in yeah, shockingly quickly, a treehouse. And it's while they're out there that Ernest first talks to Eartha Kit. And that's when Ernest comes back and explains, she told me that trolls are real and that it's this tree and that I have to knock three times. When a world like you places his hand on a tree like this and says, Yea, I call thee forth, Trantor. But what are the chances of that happening? And Why say this she, very specific thing. She knows Ernest. Why would she tell him the exact directions to bring the troll back to life? That's why that Wonderful. scene is off camera. <laughs> because it'd be too hard to swallow. Now, as a kid, I thought that was the funniest part of the movie. <laughs> Ernest unintentionally. Ernest, like, that's something. a very Homer Simpson moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, not quite as fun. Now, now, Eartha Kitt, who at this point we've been introduced to, Probably the first actor in this series who is a match for Varney, who could hold their own against him. On, She's, yeah. 
Yeah. She's definitely probably the most famous actor in any of these movies, right? More than Charles Napier, right? Probably. Yes. 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 Catwoman for Catwoman. Catwoman, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Now, in the yeah. opening credits, she gets a pretty high billing. But th- there are scenes that what makes her feel earnest appropriate mm-hmm. are when she plays to the lens the way Varney does. Yeah. Like she, she does. really, she'll always open her body up and act like the, uh, she's aware the audience can only see me through this tunnel. Listen to the last two lines of the Troll's poem. There's one who can stop us if he will dare. Or when she's like thinking to the moon and like cursing <laughs> down and pulling up and pontificating she's about it. Actually, be- there's a great shot. Uh, first time Ernest meets her, she scares him off her property by uh, screaming and shooting a blowtorch straight at the camera. <laughs> Which is Ernest's face. So his yeah. face has been burned off, apparently. <laughs> In this, it, Eartha was like brilliant casting. Yeah. It, it, it really worked. As a kid. I kind of always felt like she was the romantic interest in this movie, right? Not really, but no. I could kind of see what? it like, right? Yeah. I don't see it at all. I think Jim Varney would be very lucky. Wait a minute. <laughs> First of all, you? you're right. Yeah. No. Maybe they went on a couple dates after the events of the film. May- maybe they, they helped raise the, the children out of time. Yeah. I, I bet they hung out, but like the first time they talk to each other, she goes, oh, you're the world kid. She is. Yeah, she She's, is much older than him. She'd have to be a century older minimum. True. <laughs> like, but in real life, I think uh, she was only like 20 years older than Jim Varney. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. But yeah. if they were to believe the story, which is why it's funny because he's like pushing 50 maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, yo, that kid. <laughs> yeah, it is funny. <laughs> but I did like <laughs> I did like those touches. And this is the one, you, you brought this up. You think this is supposed to be in the canon of the movies. This is Ernest's hometown, right? I bought in this movie the Ernest universe more than any other film. A lot of stuff is kind of inferred. There are st- things that are just straight up spoken, but there's stuff. He has that's- ancestors here. He's tied to the town by name. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and like people recognize him. They've known him for years. You, this is the only movie where you really get that sense. So Ernest and the kids build this treehouse. Uh, they're building. Uh, they're they're gizmos that they have that they're loading into this tree, are a little much, right? They're like. Home Alone caliber gadgets. Oh, no, no, no. Macaulay was making stuff like in his house. This is like they have a little remote control helicopter. Richie have- Rich equivalent gadgets. They're uh, <laughs> redneck Richie Rich. Like, yeah, Ke- <laughs> Kevin was tying paint buckets to, uh, you know, a string. Yeah. The, the, they have a fully automated dog food launching cannon. Yes. It shoots the dog food. food potato, or, potato, whatever. It, it shoots the wet <laughs> cat food and then ejects the empty shell. <laughs> now, what kind of music do you think should be playing while they're uh, building fun stuff and putting a tree house together and loading all these fantastic The, the poor man's props. karate kid music from Curtis Goes to Camp right? is what they should be using. The music they're playing is spooky, ominous music. One tree house. Under construction. Another wall coming up. Good work. One more side to go. This is really looking great. It really, it's really weird. <laughs> like they're this. playing with a taboo? Like, yeah. Like, like, like this is their Frankenstein Well, moment. they are. They're not supposed to be on the tree. And that's yeah, but why they're the making explains. toys. Like, I know. <laughs> the taboo music should be when Ernest is like building the fort, which they kind of just imply rather than show. They have yeah. a really weird ADR. Hey kids, here's all this stuff I've been collecting that we can make into gadgets. <laughs> Come on, kids, this will be fun. I've been collecting this stuff for years. Yeah, they just kind of like cut or crossfade <laughs> and suddenly all the materials that they need are just in the woods with well, them. It's like 100 minutes long, just show it. <laughs> it's like 20 minutes longer than the last movie. And they, way more happened they, in the last they, movie. They couldn't afford to like bring the truck onto the set that day with all the props in the truck. Yeah. Because like that's the line is Ernest is like, here's all the stuff from a junkyard. Yeah. Hey, Ernest, so, did you bring it all in your dump truck? Sure, I guess. I, what I, I was <laughs> like, well, they're, they're roving around there. They use actual woods and then they go through a spooky portal and seamlessly they're on a soundstage. Seamlessly. seamlessly. Yeah. <laughs> On VHS, it probably wasn't that noticeable, but as a kid, I could never really tell the difference. Yeah, on Blu-ray, it's pretty obvious. Sure, yeah. The height of their tree fort is like one pallet jack up. Like it's it's not super tall. And like like their matte painting uh, on the back is like a farmhouse in the day. Yeah, it's (laughs) it's terribly out of place. This, I think, I, I made a note about. I think they spent their money wisely on this one. They prioritized the budget. 
probably knowing that 99% of people were going to watch this on a tube TV, mm -hmm. right? So they put a lot of their money into Trantor, the troll monster. The yes. main troll. He, he looks great. Mm. He's disgusting. Uh, He's wet in a bad way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here. So the bullies show up to the treehouse. Yeah. How? I don't know. <laughs> they just know. <laughs> yeah. They sense weakness in the woods and they go there and they find this tree this well, tree house. Well, why do they build the they build the new tree house because they want one high up so like the bullies can't get to them. Yeah. But the, the yeah. bullies just know to like go into this obscure location in the middle of the woods. Yeah. Well, it, it wasn't just about running away from the bullies. If you if you go back to the madness that was the outfit swap monologue in the garage. The whole point was to set up a defensible position. Yeah. Yes. Well, let's talk about that. We skipped that. <laughs> Ernest gives a kind of a pep talk to Kenny yep. after the bullies get him. Yep. And um, Ernest does something that I have always associated this is an Ernest thing, but this is the only movie we've seen so far that he does it in. And he does his characters, which he's done before. Yep. But this time, he just looks to the camera and magically pops into costumes and there's crazy lighting dramatic and lighting different angles yeah it was a dark night everybody oh my the ottomans they're just wussy and he's delivering a speech and it's just jumping around between characters the kid is just standing there watching like yeah this is great and you're not quite sure if if the Ernest kid is, is see, right. Is the kid seeing what, is the kid what we're seeing? seeing? Yeah. The kid at least, at least sees Ernest go into characters. Yes. Like, like at least just acting or moving his hat or something. Bare minimum. I think it can be assumed that he's seeing him in these costumes. I don't know. Because he refers to like Ace World later. He says like, Ace, we got to do this. Like he doesn't just always say Ernest. Yeah, but maybe it's just the, that's the voice. He's talking about That's the, the voice. Ace, yeah, right. Ace and, and the kid know, the kid calls it multiple personalities later on. Yeah. He's trapped in the tree with the guy with multiple personalities. Yeah. But I think the costume changes might not really be happening. That, that might be a little bit of magical realism in the Ernest yeah. movie. In Dr. Otto, they literally have a transformation machine. <laughs> Dr. Otto goes into it, becomes another Jim Varney character, comes back as Dr. Otto, blast my plan. Do and in uh, the last two movies, he does get into costumes, but they for are... For reason. For reasons, they are him... Uh, Trying to get out of prison. He's resourceful. He makes yeah. a costume out of something he He's putting on up. a disguise in order to get someone out of prison or to get himself out of prison. Yeah. yeah. And in Christmas, he dresses up as the animal wrangler because yes. he's trying to get animals. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny There's a that. reason In for this movie, he puts on costumes of his mind. because... Because he always puts on costumes, so we just need to get him doing the costumes. So behind Ernest and Old Lady Hackmore, we have Kenny. Ryan, who is Kenny? Kenny is a white boy that barely gets to do anything he wants in this town. <laughs> he is the son of the sheriff. Yeah. He thinks he's funny. He gets the girl, I guess, even though he's like 11. I guess. Kenny is the leader of the three children because one is a girl and the other has glasses. Yes. It's, he is just, yeah, he's a product of the 90s. He wears a dumb striped shirt. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of Do you think he's supposed to be, we need a Bart Simpson? Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, Ryan might sound like he's being reductive. That is everything there is to know about Kenny. I, I just imagine like generous. all these YouTube yeah. comments, Ryan is being reductive. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like the type of kid that when I had to save up money to buy a Game Boy, some piece of shit already bought him a Sega Nomad. All so that's right? why you don't and like I'm, him. I don't like him. <laughs> Whoa. I don't like you're bringing, him. You're bringing a lot. To <laughs> I got a lot there, didn't I? So bringing can, a lot. He's, he's pumping his fist going, yes, and like wiggling his eyebrows at the camera. He, I don't think he has any character. I don't, I think even, call, I think calling him a Bart Simpson is generous. I, I there is a Bart Simpson. He's one of the uh, victims of Trantor later. It's a blonde kid on a skateboard that Trantor just sees and goes, oh, I'll, I'll take you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, let, we got to get the basics, well, the basics of this plot established because yeah, sure, we're taking yeah. forever. So the, the troll, way, there's the, trolls in this movie. So this troll gets unearthed by Ernest. Ernest screws up, and the troll's gonna go around turning all... He needs to get five kids and turn them into wooden dolls in order to raise his yeah. army of darkness. Yeah, they hatches these gooey eggs from within the tree. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, he Ernest learns that the trolls are real when he first sees one. He goes to Eartha Kit as the expert. Eartha Kit opens an old book, shows him a rhyme. There's a prophecy that someone who's clearly Ernest will be the one to save the day. And she has this wonderful line where she address, she finally, she has a pep talk to Ernest to go, you are the, yes, you are the, where was it go? The great redneck hope? Yes. yes. The great redneck hope. 
they do this fantastic <laughs> hero light as Ernest gains confidence and looks up. They literally do the hallelujah. <laughs> Maybe one of the most tasteful <laughs> shots done. Cut immediately to he's running down the street <laughs> is, with a megaphone and rim shot, screaming, Trolls! 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 I trolls! We're all gonna die! Love, that's just, his strategy! <laughs> like, like, I love, that's such a good hard cut joke, even to mm -hmm. adults, I, I'd argue, because the, the acting on Barney's face when she goes, you are the great redneck hope, and he just suddenly... I am. Gains but, confidence, yeah. oh like, is so... It's like, that's the first time anyone said that to me. The first time anyone's <laughs> ever believed in me. Yeah. I did. I forgot that uh, Rimshot's running with him, because oh, yeah. his, 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 his A game is just to scream, Trolls! Our fate <laughs> is in your hands. Yes. Only you can save us. Yeah. And he just, he might as well pee his pants. No, he, <laughs> he, he, does, <laughs> yeah. he does it, like, three times in this movie, where he literally, when he's at the high school, mm -hmm. during the dance scene later, the line is literally... Literally, he just starts running and he goes, Trolls! Trolls! <laughs> save the kids! Trolls! <laughs> like a fucking robot. <laughs> like that's all, that's all that's running through his brain at nauseum. Right, so, <laughs> um, as the kids are going home, though, the Trantor takes his first victim. It's Nick or Nerd or Some whatever kid. his name is. Yeah, kid with Billy, glasses. the Blue Ranger. Kid it with glasses. Matter. The Blue um, Ranger. <laughs> doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of, um, the uh, the fear factor of the troll uh, attacking kids and the light and turning them into these little wooden dolls. As, As a kid, I thought it was scary. As an adult, I think I, I looking at it on, through that lens. When mm -hmm. my sister and I watched this together last week, we both went pretty spooky. Did your yeah. kids handle it well? Like Here, my my kids were legitimately like not freaked out because you know like they know that movies are fake. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like especially when um, the girl. Whoever her name is, Elizabeth, yeah. the girl, yeah. Uh, especially like when the girl got turned wood. Oh no, they got like they were very concerned about all the kids being turned to wood. And just to take a moment to say, like, what a wonderful fantasy premise! They have to be turned into wooden statues so their souls can feed the little troll booger goblins. Yeah, there's like escalation to like it. It, it, it isn't as simple as like oh, on the full moon, like the trolls come out. Right. It, right. It, it, Trantor it, has a mission. Whatever it's borrowing or influenced from is like some next level folklore stuff. It was cool. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it feels like a southern myth. You know? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah sure. Yeah. yeah, like. <laughs> Like, am I crazy? Well, like, oh no, like yeah. very, like very like Baptist, like you know, very some like Catholic Catholic. Yeah, yeah. There, Actually, yeah. maybe it's in the Bible somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, just, I, I imagine Matthew McConaughey, like in True Detective, holding up one of the dolls, going you know, one of the wooden guys, like, "There's a store behind this." <laughs> <laughs> so oh, Ernest, Ernest's strategy after he screams at the locals is to go buy troll stuff. Mm. He goes to the local. Convenience store run by instead of Chuck and Bobby, it's Bobby and Tom. Thank Tom. you. The Tulip Brothers. So we talked a little bit about this uh, before. Gaylord Sertain, uh, who played uh, Chuck. Yeah. Um, hung up, hung up his earnest robes. He's yeah, no longer. He got, out, he got out of these movies, so they replaced him with a different heavy set man with the southern accent. Ernest trivia. Tom, who is a salesman, hucking a bunch of wares on TV in this movie. Also played a huckster selling things on TV in UHF, the Weird yeah. Al vehicle. Weird Al Yankovic. Was it a Crazy Ernie? Crazy Ernie. Yes. Who would club a baby seal to make a better deal? Tell you what, friends. If nobody comes down and buys a car for me in the next hour, uh, I'm gonna uh, club this baby seal. So he, yeah, he's replacing a uh, Gaylord, uh, Gaylord Sertain, yep. uh, who played Chuck. Bobby's still in there because that guy's not doing anything else. Um, he, he never talks. blinks in this film either. Oh, really? He doesn't blink. I was he, looking for it. He does talk in this one a little more. Mm -hmm. A little bit, yeah. I, I'd say it's not a not really a step down. This guy, this guy's fine, right? I think he's trying a lot harder. Um, but I don't know. Like, I still I, I didn't laugh at anything he said, but I was smiling when he was on screen. Mm -hmm. If that means anything, did your kids respond to him at all? No, not <laughs> not even a little bit. They they didn't understand what his purpose was, what he was doing. Uh, they they kind of got that he was selling Ernest fake troll things. He's a hustler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's hustling. But but they didn't they didn't quite grasp 
the comedy element to him, which is is the weakest comedy element in the movie. Kind of always are. The, yeah. the supporting guys. the opening band, if you will, of comedians <laughs> yeah. in these movies have Ernest are doesn't always need comedy weak. relief. No. Yeah. But like, what I do like is um, there's this uh, this graphic of their faces that's all over town. Yeah. yeah. They're they're up on a billboard. There's little signs in the background on all cars. over the place. Mm. Uh, and I remembered it from a kid because it's kind of a creepy picture of uh, Bobby's eyes. Yeah. Rewatching the movie until I realized you know you know like forty ish minute mark that it was an advertisement for them. Mm -hmm. that they exist in the universe. I thought it was like Laurel and Hardy. I thought it was like a callback to some old yeah. They comedian. want them to be Laurel and Hardy. And Actually, this production well company, put. John Cherry and folks, made a Laurel and Hardy re revival oh, in the late yeah. 90s yep. with Gaylord Sertain yep. and uh, Balky, right? What's oh, his, what's his name? God, he was in the he Langoliers. Pincho. My Bronson Pincho? Bronson Pincho, yes. Um, there's a, yeah, so there's, really? yeah, so it's Gaylord Sertain and Bronson Pincho as Laurel and Hardy. Versus a mummy or something, uh, <laughs> made by I think John Cherry or Coke Sam's or someone. So TV like movie? they clearly always wanted to make Laurel and Hardy yeah. in these earnest movies for some reason, and they got to they got to have their wish later on. <laughs> so Ernest gets rubed into buying a bunch of troll stuff, including no troll strips, which is my favorite product in the bunch. There's like a bunch of troll weapons. Ernest just takes it at face value that yeah, these are just things you can buy at CVS or whatever. <laughs> Like <laughs> troll away spray. They're ready. They have all this troll shit. That's that 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 felt like like a lot of the humor in this movie. It felt like comedy tools were used to construct these jokes, but for kids. Mm -hmm. And in a weird way, I just as a kid I didn't find any of that very funny. And as an adult, I don't find it very funny. But I still admire that they're trying to tell jokes. There is a joke. I'm jumping ahead a little bit. There is a joke that I thought was Totally out of place in this movie. Uh, Ernest is stuck in this um, metal uh, drum barrel. And uh, Eartha Kid is trying to get him out. And she's using a comic, like a humongous um, can, can opener. Yeah. yeah, That's just not the kind of joke that's usually in these movies, yeah, right? Yeah, I didn't know where they were going with that's that. That's like a Hot Shots joke. <laughs> so th there's right? a deleted scene from Ernest Goes to Jail mm. where Ernest tries to pole vault out of prison. But he's got a weight on his ankle, yeah. right? So he goes to pole vault and his leg stretches really long like something out of Army of Darkness, okay. right? It's crazy. Yeah. And they cut it because it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. If th that's the kind of joke the can opener thing is. You're like, what? Like it's too yeah, limited. It's just yeah, it's like men in tights style <laughs> joke. But see, I, th yeah. I think that joke makes far more sense than the huckster salesman joke because it it's a kids movie, and so you have to rely on that visual comedy, like like the you the do, mini yeah. montage of Ernest checking trees for what will make a good treehouse. Played gangbusters to the yeah. kids. That was that was great use of Varney's talents when he knocks on the tree and he's like, "Oh, too bassy." Like, right, the tree <laughs> falls over. He gets bird poop in his face. Yeah, they were dying, and you know, so the the giant can opener is in that universe. So I, yeah. I think it's allowed I over huckster salesman, which kids love. My, my <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying it's a better or worse joke. I'm just saying it. Uh, this movie does not usually invoke uh, cartoon props sure. yeah. in that way. Mm -hmm. So Ernest gets all these troll cover. This is gonna be another hour and a half. The Ernest gets all these troll repellent tools to defeat Trantor, and he basically uses his garbage man tools as well to fight the troll, which is kind of cool. Like he uses like the garbage truck. He makes like traps out of yeah. like dumpsters and things like that like he's it's got like weirdly it's less sophisticated than the like the pizza flinging devices he was building to fight the bullies right yeah it's just like a stick on a dumpster <laughs> <laughs> but he, and I, I loved that I, that's probably some of the better Varney acting in this movie is when he's explaining to the kids how it's gonna work he's like so the trolls gonna be walking around lean down and go yep been a long night of eating kids. <laughs> Think I'll relax in this troll motel. Like that was that was a good bit. Like, yeah, I, I really like him with the gigantic bear trap. <laughs> that in order to open it, he has to stand with his arms and legs extended, <laughs> and he's just yeah, it was really it's funny. Like, right, Rimshot rim doesn't help him. That of course, no one's there to help him except Rimshot, who's not going to help. That was the only bit that made me laugh out loud, which was Rimshot not helping <laughs> and him getting hurt. I, I I I watching it for the first time in so long. I started having flashbacks to being a kid and idolizing Ernest in this movie more than any of the other ones because he takes the role of protector of this town very seriously. And it's cool to see him being assertive and like given 
a responsibility that everyone's shooting him down for and laughing at him for, but he sticks to it. He's like when he's driving around the truck late at night with like the CB radio. I, I remember thinking like as a kid, like he's a badass. Like Ernest is like getting yeah. this done. Like he's like taking care of the troll when no one else will. And we, the audience, are, the, are like the kids. Except I like the audience. Yeah. Um, we we're rooting. <laughs> we're rooting for Ernest. Yeah. We've got his. No one believes him, and that's a great trope for children's narratives. Grown ups don't believe you. Yeah, and right. you can't trust them. This is, is your a kid is smarter than a grown up gives them credit for. A, a kid is more smart than grown ups give them credit for. And Ernest is the perfect vessel for that message. He's the kid. Like he yeah. is yeah, the yeah. kid in these movies. Going back to Ernest Saves Christmas, we talked about how the Punky Brewster girl, what's her name? Harmony. Harmony. Thank you, Neil. There's some awkward territory you walk into when like a 40 year old dude who clearly smokes cigarettes all the time is hanging around <laughs> making jokes uh, with a, with a, with a, with an underage kid. And they they use the John Wayne true grit humor to kind of solve that problem. Mm -hmm. In this movie, it's just left up to Varney. Like, don't make it creepy. In Varney, he, I think he succeeds. Like, I think a lot of it has to do with the way the movie is filmed. Yeah, because this movie, I think more than except for maybe uh, goes to jail. This one uh, has a lot more weird backlighting and, uh, you know, cartoonish face in the camera action. It's not the same kind of universe as Goes to Chris uh, Goes to Christmas, as <laughs> Saves Christmas or Goes to Camp. Yeah. Uh, where in those two movies, Ernest feels a little bit more like a realistic adult that you might know. Mm -hmm. He's a dummy, but he's you know mm -hmm. he's a real guy. In this movie, he's totally he may if you told if it were revealed halfway through the movie that. No one can see Ernest except the kids. <laughs> that would make sense, right? I, in a weird, some ways, yeah. But I like what you mean. Yeah, I like what you mean. Yeah, he's like Artie or like Drop Dead Fred or something. Yeah, you know. I think something that makes Ernest really relatable for us, the audience, who were children at the time, or men in their thirties who are watching Ernest <laughs> scared stupid, who perhaps feel like large children, like <laughs> Ernest, like Ernest, <laughs> that when Ernest interacts with adults, the mayor, the sheriff. Eartha Kitt's character, they all yell at him, they scold him, they rep. We see Ernest, I'm in trouble face. Ernest is in a position as a grown man who's probably in his 40s, maybe into even early 50s, who could get grounded. Yeah. He's in trouble the way that we would go, oh no, I should hope Ernest gets out of this. Ernest screws up. He builds this troll trap. He accidentally catches the bully kids who just so happen to be the mayor's kid, right? <laughs> yeah, one of, one them, of them, right? Yeah. And Ernest is like, oh damn, I've just carried the mayor's kid. Well, he opened, he reveals the troll thinking that they're in the truck. The sheriff's aiming his gun yeah. at the, tr <laughs> with the troll. Because yeah. everyone's like, I guess Ernest isn't crazy. He caught a troll. Mm. It turns out to be a kid, two kids crying, so Ernest is immediately <laughs> fired, which is what they should do. Absolutely. That does it, Warl. You're fired. But I, the, he's lucky he's not in jail again. Kenny <laughs> abandons him. Ernest is all alone. It's just him and Rimshot. The mayor yells, shut up, Worrell, at one point. <laughs> it's really good. Yes, with the aid of the most advanced troll fighting equipment known to modern technology. Shut up, Worrell. Cliff, you gotta get out of search party for my boys. It's good, yeah. Gets you uh, right in the ears. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, 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 Ernest is in trouble. Yeah, he's grounded. Old, yeah. Shut up was one of the worst things you could say. That's true. I, okay, so I had a moment with this movie, and this was it. So Ernest sits down on the front bumper of that garbage truck with his dog, and he goes like, well, that's it, Rimshot. We're done in this town. We're finished in this town. So much for being a hero. Uh -huh. oh, thanks, but it's no use. And Varney's just doing that big kid crying acting where he's trying not to cry in front. Like, it's almost like he knows people are watching him. Like, oh, I'm not going to cry. And, like, he says, like, that's me, Ernest P. Whirl. Bottom of the gene pool, no money down, nothing to live for. <laughs> I cried. Really? I cried. And my sister cried a little bit too. Whoa. You think that's going to be his lowest point? It gets lower later. It gets in the movie. lower, but that's his rocky moment. Yeah. We've been analyzing Ernest movies for two months now, and I, this movie plays it fast and loose with the Ernest canon. It's believable that Ernest has bounced around to a few towns. He's had a really hard time, like, keeping a steady job. And this is the first time people have instilled confidence into him. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about the Eartha Kitt scene. Like, you can do this. Yeah. yeah. And he takes it, like, by the balls. Like, no, I'm going to save these kids and get this troll. And he has that fleeting moment where he's like, yeah. And then the whole plot of the movie is about, oh, he's doomed to this fate of being a fool because of a curse. You know? You're right. This is the first movie where Ernest gets to be the hero. 
Yeah. In all the other movies, he's helping out with other people's problems. Mm. Yeah. In this one, he messed up and he's the only one who can help. Uh, and of course, it's capped by everyone's favorite joke in the movie. Miak? Not Miak. Oh. He never do end to quit. The I guess the Miak joke's <laughs> pretty big, huh? Why? Well, I've never known when to quit. Just ask my fourth grade teacher. He never knew when to quit. Oh. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, M- Miak is the reference that everyone knows. The best joke is I never knew when to quit. This, it's a yes. joke so that nice great. they played it twice. They yeah. do. I think is it the same take both times? Yeah. Exactly. It's a really good cutaway. It's like a it's like a precursor to Family Guy cutaway here. <laughs> sure, were. sure. Yeah. And that that that's when do we get the Miak scene? Like what is it next? <laughs> he goes <laughs> So he goes back to uh Hackmore oh, and Oh, it's cuz the truck scene. That's the, <gasps> the oh the truck chase yeah the, the, the Terminator oh, this is a chase great, of the yeah movie. this is actually like a pretty cool chase right oh yeah um yeah he uh well first of all he nails the he nails Trantor with the door by accident <laughs> <laughs> which is <laughs> funny that's but right. it totally uh it totally kind of takes the wind out of Trantor as a villain. <laughs> <laughs> or just could like accidentally beat him up. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Trantor comes back right away and stabs like his giant knife through the. It's pretty scary because also, by the way, he has a giant sword that he's had this whole time apparently. Yeah. But anyway, Trantor is chasing him in his truck. It's late at night, Ernest is alone. Great lighting. There's a shot of Trantor pulling the truck by rope. Uh, backwards, he's super, and he's like in darkness, and it's like a really striking and creepy shot. Mm. Yeah. The, 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 not, I'm gonna keep calling him Wishbone. What's his, uh, Rimshot. Rimshot, Rimshot. <laughs> Rimshot is driving the truck. Greatest children's movie ever made, as far as I'm concerned. The, the dog is driving the goddamn truck. They stage it well. Like, like Rimshot has to, like, jump down and press the gas, shift it. And you're like, <laughs> they trained the dog to change the gear of the truck. <laughs> All right. Like, and, and, and uh, th- th- I remember as a kid how satisfying it was to watch Ernest back over the troll. And, you know, what's the line? How about a bumper sandwich, booger lips? Booger lips. As a kid, you were like, yeah, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tran- Trantor has a good line here. Uh, Trantor is finally confronting Ernest and says, You will pay for the sins of your forefather. Ah! You're going to pay for the sins of your forefather. And, and Ernest, <laughs> just, Ernest got his, he's got his, his, uh, his wits about him. He knows what's up. He's only got one father. And he didn't know him that well. I didn't have four fathers. I just had one father, and I didn't know him that well. It's oh, a man. beautiful one. It's, it's great. Super. Classic Ernest. Man, what a good movie. This is the Miak scene, right? This is the big yeah, joke. Yeah, this is when they, when they find out there's a letter missing or something. It's supposed to be milk. Uh, and they've really telegraphed it. Every time the troll <laughs> starts to get Ernest, <laughs> he kn- knocks over some milk. As a kid, do you think he didn't know? So as a kid, I grew up watching a lot of monster movies, yeah. and they always telegraph the weakness, like the yeah. blob, like you know, it's the ice like three times before yeah. the, the, the the Steve oh, yeah, McQueen yeah. figures it out. Mm-hmm. And in this movie, as a kid, I picked up on it the first time I saw milk. Yeah. Like Ernest, use milk, and they, like he can't hear so me. I, yeah, the I think you are supposed to be ahead of the game there. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah. when Ernest says, "Oh, it's Miak," which is some obscure product, From South American <laughs> spice blend. Uh, yeah, yeah. The ring. I think, yeah, you're supposed to know like Ernest. You're no, you're missing a letter there. <laughs> <laughs> the kids in the back seat of the drive thru going, No, Ernest, it's milk. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what they wanted. What are they reading? Like the Necronomicon for kids? Like, what is that book? That like the Red Necronomicon. <laughs> 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 Show. Oh, I didn't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he apparently he's able to get it. Miak. Yeah. That's the, be, that's the best thing is like Ernest is off camera for like five minutes of this movie. Tracking the rest down of the Miak. town goes back to normal. Well, like, they're going to the Halloween party. Everyone's having a good time. Focus. Yeah, yeah. He runs into a door. His face is all smashed up. And then he runs into the party and he's trying to warn everyone about the troll, but it's just coming out like Now 
<laughs> he's a drug <laughs> asshole. Yeah. Everyone's just like, oh man, Ernest is fucking drunk. <laughs> Someone show him out, please. Just, we, did we fire that guy? Yeah. <laughs> he's in Oh man, this is just sad. The bear, the bear literally goes, all right, anyway. Like he, just, like he just keeps going on his Halloween speech. How cool would it be to live in a town where you had like real Halloween parties, by the way? That the mayor came out like, thank we, you for right, joining we, Halloween with me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what yeah. you're saying is every town needs a, a Halloween party. A, a Let's all get together have a Halloween That party. was part of the fantasy mm. with movies like this and Hocus Pocus was like the whole town like cares about Halloween and, and, yeah. and embraces it in a way. From, Does like, any town have a Halloween party? Probably. Salem, Mass. <laughs> yeah, 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 has, like, Salem big, is uh, a Halloween Yeah, party. the whole year round. So the Miak, the Miak. A punchline is here. Ernest believes it's Miak, not Milk. Does does Hackmore realize it's Milk? No, Hack. All right, Hackmore is working on her own theory about the heart of a child. The heart of a child. <laughs> we need a heart. A child's heart. <laughs> she thinks it, it's a literal heart because she's a witch and she's scaring the kids and stuff. That's right. She thinks it's a literal. Yeah, heart. Yeah, but there's a scene where she's outside and she sees a mother. Dressed as pizza or something, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a kid dressed as a as a bear, as a pizza and they hug, bear. and there's yeah. a sweet moment, and that's when she realizes, oh, it's unconditional love. <laughs> 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 she literally yeah. hisses at kids in this movie. Yeah, she's really boys, good. Does she hiss at a troll and it scares the troll? Yeah, away? she's able to ward trolls away with her creepiness. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest confronts the troll who's um, finally collected enough kids mm -hmm. and um, well, he's and one kid short is no he gets the last kid at the at the Halloween party. I thought I thought Rimshot was the last. No, kid. Rimshot was a bonus kill. For oh Rim my troll, no! I think. Rimshot and Billy are bonus kills. Ooh. Yeah, because he leaves the um, the the statue. He doesn't need the statue. Yeah, yeah. Ernest keeps the statue of Rimshot. of Rimshot, and this is the lowest point in the movie because Ernest's dog has Rimshot. been hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. I was realizing that dog stuff in this movie is so heavy and hits you so hard. Yeah. It's almost wasted in this movie. They should have made a Ernest Can't Find His Dog movie. They, this, right? my oh. sister and I weren't prepared for this second hit because we got hurt so bad by Ernest getting fired that when Ernest notices the dog, we, we knew the dog was coming. I remembered the dog, but there's, it's just one take. It's one shot where Ernest like is like really sad and upset and he kind of gets his gumption together, and I could hear like, oh, like the equivalent of like the Rocky fanfare in my head when he goes like, you know, I tell you what's gonna go down, Kenny. I tell you what's gonna happen. My great granddaddy put that troll in a hole, and so can I. Someone with a runny nose is gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember like he like fixes his hat and gets up. My great great granddaddy put him in that hole, and so can I. Somebody with a runny nose is gonna die. And two things are going on with the movie there. One is like, yeah, fuck yeah, Ernest, go get him. Yeah, I've sworn oh, more, this episode this, more than <laughs> your history, pal. You're Elvis. I, I, used, I <laughs> use that line. That's still. a great line. I yeah. still use that line. <laughs> and, and this, the other thing that's going on on top of let's make Ernest look like a badass who's taking care of things, is he's going to try and solve the problem with violence, right? Like that seems to be because it comes up or later. Remember right? at the end. When, when, oh, well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but this is where that seed is first sown. Is that Ernest is like, I'm gonna, he's gonna die. I'm gonna kill him. Like, I'm gonna go get him. Sure. And that's where like the third act of the movie begins because the Miak. Would the Miak have worked? Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Un unless. Ironically, the Miak also has some sort of dairy product in it, and everyone would have assumed that it was Miak. <laughs> Even though it just happens to have some goat cheese in it. There's like, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, that Miak did not work. He gets knocked on his ass and his dog gets turned into a statue. If you remember, uh, Ernest gets knocked on his ass and falls uh, under some ice cream. Yeah, yeah. And so the kids are starting to put two and two together that it's, you know, it's the cream, it's the it's the milk that does it. So the kids again, mm -hmm. this is the perfect this is a perfect kids movie. Yep. The kids are smarter than everyone. Yep. They hop on their bikes. <laughs> they head to the store to get more milk. <laughs> Thank you. I saw the wheels. Yeah. I saw the cogs get stuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's me act. Uh, but also, this is a super pivotal moment in the film because now all the other adults realize that there really is a troll. And, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And they're still one step behind the game, though, because they think, oh, Ernest could just, Ernest can like beat it up. 
or like outwit it somehow. I don't know why they believe in well, him. Well, because <laughs> because it ran away from Ernest. Yeah. Oh yeah, because of the milk. Okay. Because of the ice I licked cream. his ass. Or so whatever. anyway, <laughs> they fill a super soaker up with milk. It's your classic original super soaker. Mm -hmm. I can't confirm this, but I think this is the first movie. To have a super soaker in it. Super soaker and Dunkin' Donuts probably paid a good amount of money. There's a lot of Dunkin' Donuts in this movie. Yes. Like, on, like, Ernest's dashboard and stuff like that. Like, he just has it in his truck. Uh, if you're a childlike adult, you're just eating donuts all the time. It makes yeah. perfect sense to me. <laughs> Very true. Ernest goes to the tree. Yes. Because by this point... He's in his truck. Yes. There are enough. They've got all five. And, and then, uh, yeah, bonus with Rimshot. They've got all five of the little wooden dolls. And they've seized the children's souls to feed the troll army. Now, yes. here's a big piece of trivia that everyone thinks they're so clever they know. We should do about. an Ernest trivia for this. Okay. Sure. Ernest trivia! Yeah. The, the two brothers who worked on the uh, costume design who for the trolls also did Killer Clowns from Outer Space. What are they called? The, the Chiodo brothers? They directed that movie. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Their only directorial, their directorial debut and, and finale. <laughs> <laughs> but the, they continue to have a long uh, career in, uh, in, in effects. Yep, in makeup, effects. in prosthetics, and effects. Cool, fun stuff. It's not that subtle and it's not that hard to find that some of the trolls from this, from the troll army, are the Killer Clowns from Outer Space repainted. Yeah. Great way to save money. Now, not that was a movie I was... Afraid of as a kid. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Because it's a, it is totally a step up it's, in terms of like horror. Oh, it's actually scary at times. If, yeah. If you're a kid. Um. But like, you guys but I it as a kid. Half of it. My parents let me watch a lot of scary stuff yeah. as a kid. So I remember when up. I when I found this out, I was like, you tricked me into watching the scary monsters <laughs> in my little kid <laughs> movie. I, I, I would say while it's a smart way to save money yeah. and like they are kind of spooky. If you're like a horror purist or just like a film enthusiast. And you were like, oh, I want to like see the uh, clowns. They'd be like, oh, they're gone. Yeah. We use maybe those for Ernest Scared Stupid. Maybe they're they just gone. used the mold. <laughs> maybe it was just the mold. Maybe they still have the... None of that stuff lived. It was latex, right? Oh, sure, yeah. sure. There's a good bit of physical acting from uh, Jim Varney. Wow, surprise. Uh, <laughs> he's he's going to kill the Trantor by ramming his car into him again. And uh, he does this great move where he like lifts his foot way up to hit the gas. <laughs> It goes, he, dude. I can't do it right. Now. Like, like it, I don't. I need like four feet in front of me. Like, you're no Jim Varney. I'm no Jim problem. Varney. Like, good on him. When you picture the earnest walk, it's almost like the Patterson footage of the Bigfoot. <laughs> he uses his elbows. He uses his arms and legs. <laughs> the costume, as we're all wearing some variation of it. Happy Halloween, everyone. Happy Halloween. That. It's pretty simple, but he makes it. He uses his whole body mm -hmm. when he does really anything. Uh, Trantor is successful. The trolls rise out of the ground. It's kind of a cool effect, right? The, the the whole process of these tiny little troll acorns growing and oozing yeah. as more yeah. souls get added to the trees. It's <laughs> what I imagine when people talk about Putin's uh, troll farm. <laughs> when, when I was a kid, I loved how proactive Ernest <laughs> was because Ernest, you know, he hits Trantor with his truck again, and he <laughs> sees like the. The, what does he refer to them as? He thinks they look like not, Brussels, sprouts. Brussels sprouts. sprouts. He sees the Brussels sprouts starting to grow and he doesn't wait. Like he just immediately goes, all right, I've got this. He <laughs> takes the role of protector very seriously and he just jumps on top of them. Like, all right, problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, after he fails to, to keep them from touching the ground, he, he, he gets a trash can lid and just tries to literally suppress them. But it doesn't work. The killer clowns come out of the ground and uh, Kenny comes back at the 11th hour because Ernest is literally using a baseball bat to beat up the trolls. Good on him. fair weather friend. <laughs> yeah. Not a well, anyway, yeah, the kids, they got their milk. They're doing the thing. They're finding all sorts of inventive fun ways to get milk on the trolls and when they die they turn into like orange light well they tell they tell Ernest like hey baseball bats and trucks won't work yeah yeah you gotta use milk <laughs> and then Ernest is like oh sure and then Ernest uses his multiple personalities to go to town mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. meanwhile the trolls that aren't getting killed are kind of killing the parents right <laughs> <laughs> literally shooting guns yeah. at them and well it's it's kind of horrifying there I, I the moments I remembered as going too far as a kid were there's a Parent dressed as a clown, they're nailing his feet to a tree. One troll eats a bunch of bullets 
And then another troll hits it in the back of the head and he starts shooting real bullets out of his this mouth. That's intense. That's like yeah. really intense At stuff. At a guy who's handcuffed to a car. It's like a G-rated Army of Darkness finale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. No, and they're like, they're like tackling and like kidnapping the women folk. Yeah. It's getting real. Yeah, and the mayor is like on the ground tied up or something and a couple of the trolls are swinging at like a giant like truck engine like they're gonna throw it on top of him. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. It's like, that, that'll take him out. Yeah. It's pretty scary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what ends up happening is is uh, Trantor seeing oh shit Ernest figured out it's milk yeah <laughs> kind of scurries away to his little hideout under the tree oh of and course. he levels up and yes. he begs Satan to help him <laughs> I don't know how he <laughs> yes and it works because uh, Trantor starts off fairly ugly and then just cranks the dial yes. all the way to 11 he gets a third nose no. No, no, dude, <laughs> but no he's got like weird worms come out of his ears yeah, and yeah. just gets more, more fingernails it is satan right I think it is. Who else? Who the hell else is he talking to? Like the what, troll god? Like, like, <laughs> the troll who does he beg? Does he say like my troll brothers? Like oh, who is he you? talking to? Like I forget. <laughs> I don't think he ever cites any. You know what? Let's check the novelization. I bet it, <laughs> it probably clears it all. Yeah, up. Michael Crichton. I, and that's a trope I miss. Michael Crichton wrote <laughs> the novelization. <laughs> he would have written anything. Here's a yeah. There is a trope I honestly miss. Shredder dies, come back as Super Shredder. I thought of Super Skeletor Shredder. Skeletor gets, finally gets the sword, becomes Super Skeletor. Mm. Yep. Yes, I keep almost saying Trogdor. It is not Trogdor. <laughs> becomes a super troll. Yes. Trantor now can, like, control the elements. He, like, makes a wall of fire. Separating yes. the parents. Looks awesome. He's, it looks uh, great. Standing in like the mist with lights behind him, and it's like, oh my god, this troll is out of control. <laughs> so it's just down to Ernest and Trantor. The kids are separated. Kenny's been turned into a wooden doll now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, there's the, the troll like steps on him too. It looks like he's gonna break or something. God, oh, did you get great? Did you guys like the line when Kenny is squaring off against Trantor and Kenny tries squirting milk at him, and Trantor says. Even milk can't stop me now. <laughs> I'm too powerful. <laughs> I yes. I used to quote that with uh, my friends because, like, out of context, that sounds like a brag. Like, oh, even milk can't stop me. <laughs> I sure, yeah. That, that sounds like someone who's lactose intolerant oh, yeah. but has a pill. <laughs> like, no, I took my pill. Bring it on. Yeah. So, like, milk is off the table. The parents all recognize Ernest as the only one who can stop Trantor at this point. He's the hero. Yeah. They're squaring off. I was laughing because the parents in like slow motion are yelling at Ernest, Kill him! <laughs> That's right, so I think they planted that seed earlier where sure. It's uh, we don't want to repeat the mistakes that they made back in the in the dark ages. What world? The beginning of what the movie. Ernest's forefather did. Yeah, they have this moment where uh, again, I, I my heart started pounding a little too much. I know I sound like my judgment sounds so suspect when I talk about emotional investment in this movie. Uh, Ernest like sees a carton of milk. Ernest is cornered. There's fire behind him and a troll in front of him, and he stands up with a carton of milk, and it's like the best footage I've seen of Varney in a movie. He looks real good. Like, I think he was trying to, like, look intimidating or just look more healthy than he's looked before. <laughs> he stands up and he uh, calls out Trantor. Like, he's just in no way afraid. Uh, he calls him out and says, like, hey, you've done pretty good against little kids and dogs. How about you take on a real man? And I, I, I'm watching this. My heart's pounding. I'm like, this is cool. Ernest being a badass after watching these four other movies. It's, it's, it's like a nice payoff for, like, ten hours of entertainment. <laughs> but it's in bad faith. Because, yeah, the violence stuff isn't going to work. Like the milk's, What do you think would have happened if he tried the milk? Do you think the milk would have failed and Trantor would have ripped his head off or something? Yes. What yes. Do you think? Alternate yeah. cuts. That's, no. Yeah. So <laughs> somehow <laughs> Ernest figures it out. That milk is the wrong play here. Eartha Kid is like rooting for him to like figure it out, Ernest. For some reason, she doesn't say anything, but like well, she's behind the firewall. Yeah, yeah. You can't uh, hear Ernest her. realizes the heart of a child, and he drops the milk. And what's this line here? He says, "Come like, here, fella. Come here, big fella." Yeah. Yep. <laughs> And the parents look so disappointed and disgusted. <laughs> and Our kids are dead! <laughs> <laughs> Come on! <laughs> 
<laughs> and they're like, what? And Ernest <laughs> starts dancing with Wolf. Trantor. Mm -hmm. He picks him up and they start doing twirls and the parents are like, we're all gonna die. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. <laughs> all he had to do is put milk right. on this thing. And, and I don't know if you guys saw this, but was Trantor making a face like he enjoyed dancing or was that just kind of his troll face being pushed around by momentum? But I, I, I swear it, there was a look like Trantor liked dancing. Maybe, there yeah. is a hint of that. I saw too. Okay. Did you catch that the, the song they play during the dance is the opening yes. title theme song, but it's a waltz? Exactly. Oh, it's, the, it? it's the world yeah. waltz. Yeah. This world. movie has a good score, actually. Um, I looked up the uh, the guy who did the score, and he mostly did other Ernest movies. <laughs> I, I, it's a competent score. There's sometimes it's a it's little memorable. too in your face, like sure. like it's like a digital xylophone during the sad scenes and stuff. It's a bit much. There's but. enough of a real orchestra playing. For oh the yes, most part. yeah. The so the, Ernest, I, I really like the organ that plays for the troll. Oh yeah, yeah. It sounds pretty cool. Bring me the head of Ernest. So what happens after Ernest dances with the troll? Does he die? <laughs> That's just too much for the troll's heart, and uh, he just kind of like explodes. No, nope. no, no, no. He does explode. He stands there. But whoa, the whoa, most whoa. important What's... thing that the, the yeah the final move is of course Ernest oh kisses yes. the troll. Yes, <laughs> it gives, it gives us, him a big old kiss, mm -hmm. and then he lets go. And for some reason, the troll is like floating in midair after he lets go of him, and he does the the you know the reason we're all here. He looks at the camera and goes. <laughs> <laughs> With a big trail of yeah. snot. Yeah. By the way, Jack, give us your best ew. Oh, sure. Ew. Excellent. Picture, Great. Did you Very rehearse good. that Thank on the you. plane ride to Boston? <laughs> 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 I'm just picturing you with like a mirror. Like, I spent, the plane. I'd like another <laughs> seat, please. Oh, like, <laughs> when, did, when did you guys start the podcast? I've been spending that long working on my <laughs> ew. So, uh, yeah, and uh, Trantor... The first thing is he explodes, right? It's like a crazy explosion. Yeah, yeah, it's like, like scanners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All these ghosts get sucked back in into him. By the way, there's some pretty cool rotoscoped ghosts. In They're not good. It, it's cool that they tried, but it's like yeah. I'm not even kidding. With it. It's like it's like eight frames of animation across the whole film. It's yeah. really bad. There's not a lot of it, but I, I like how it looks. It, it, it all gets sucked back into the space where Trantor was and it just implodes and there is a little fart noise. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. A high, like as high pitched as you can go with the fart sound. <laughs> yes, the, 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 the ebb and flow of the emotions in the last five minutes of this movie, it's like literally people behind a wall of fire in slow motion going, say, kill fart, him to a waltz Kevin, with a kiss and a fart sound. It's just, it's so yeah. all over the If floor. you were editing this and you show me this cut and that fart noise was in there, I'd be like, you know, that's funny, but take it out. Yeah. <laughs> they, I think, do you think they knew this was the last time they got to do a Disney movie and they were like, just... I. I, I think I more know. so no. they they knew that this was the last Disney movie they had contracted. Yeah, and so I think they were pulling out all the stops. I agree. This this is kid movie to the max. Yep, everything's a safe bet. Only in a kid movie would your squirt gun be the weapon. You ride your bikes everywhere. Yes. You're building a tree fort. Mm -hmm. You're building contraptions. You're smarter than the parents. Mm -hmm. It's the ultimate kid vehicle. And it's I think extreme. Well, here, that, that attitude, it existed to a degree in the 80s. Mm -hmm. I think it was solidified with Home Alone. Sure. Which came out a year before this. Yes, mm -hmm. came out. It was in theaters while they were probably writing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And around the same time, Nickelodeon was starting to rebrand and... Doug was on air, maybe. Well, Doug's not the best example, but they were getting very <laughs> into the kid power kind of thing. Kid power. Like, salute your shorts. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Dude and, yep. yeah, yeah. And uh, this movie is... Like ominously nineties, I think. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. Yeah. What? Like foreboding in a way. Well, I, I mean, it just like it foretells what the nineties became for children's entertainment, yeah. uh, which compared to something like you know, like the previous Ernest movies, aside, uh, like the uh, the previous movies where Ernest interacts with kids has a more low key feeling to it. The kids are 
almost yeah. the stars of this movie. Yeah. And the, it is to the its kids detriment. In, yeah, the, the kids time. in uh, yes. Ernest Goes to Camp are at fault. They have a lot of problems. The kids in this movie are just, uh, we rule. Yeah. We're right. Adults drool, kids rule. Yeah. So Trantor dies in that fart. I guess. And <laughs> that's a great line. <laughs> the <My> legacy. <laughs> all the kids who've been turned into wooden dolls come back, including old lady Hackmore's 200 year old siblings, apparently. They're, now they're back. They're like yeah. 10 years old. And she's like, oh, there's much to tell. They're going to like somehow indoctrinate them back into modern society. It's going to be a nightmare. Yeah, they showed <laughs> there's a we movie saw the there. past yeah. in a long time ago. They're like, it's like Puritan times. Mm -hmm. So either Eartha Kitt, by like, as we discussed, Dumbledore logic, is just 140 years old because of magic. Or <laughs> I guess I, a, I, I don't know. It, it you know, this is Briar. This is Missouri. Yeah. They should have just put a year up, like 1964 or something <laughs> at the beginning. Followed us here to this new world. He has stolen our children. They got electricity I really late in Briarville. A <laughs> horse carriage goes by, yeah. and then you, the camera like, hands over to like some Beatles albums. Yeah. On <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, they're like, why are you so old? And she's like, oh, I have a lot to tell you. And everyone, everyone's happy because the parents are reunited with their kids. Yeah, it's but like, Ernest misses his dog. He's like, mm, my dog's not coming back. Uh, yeah, they're not going to give me my job back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then immediately, you know, Rimshot comes, comes back, barks, pokes his head out, and all is well. Rimshot. 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 Oh, where have you been? Did you miss your daddy? Great music cue. I really like that yeah. music cue. He makes out with a dog a little bit, I think. Oh, we're gonna go back to the truck and hang out. Yeah. <laughs> he really yeah. likes driving. <laughs> He's kissing the dog and uh, Eartha Kit, like, it's the last shot, right? Yeah. She's looking down at them, like, kissing, and then she, like, makes a weird face, looks at the camera, like, oh. Well, sorry. Well, yeah. they, they, <laughs> almost, the <laughs> they almost do a weird thing where, like, Ernest kissing the dog and then like falling below frame is almost like a suggestive suggestive like yeah. guy and girl make out to the floor thing and then Eartha Kit looks to the camera like this, this shouldn't be happening. <laughs> yeah. She's like no, she's looking at the camera like hey, you know what? Actors, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> guy loves his dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh so that I can actually see like the pr the production company at hand going so at the end, he should like make out with a girl. Like, no, he makes out with a dog. <laughs> He's a child. <laughs> That's yeah. kind of what they're going for, I guess. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't land entirely. It's funny. Uh, yeah. I think Ernest, it is funny. It, it works for Ernest's me. sexuality is probably something we're going to have to talk about. Ernest <laughs> trivia. trivia. The poster for this movie, it is a painting, although there's definitely a photograph reference in there. Sure. It's uh, Ernest hiding in a big pumpkin in a, in a graveyard. Does not happen in the movie. No. I'm glad the uh, IMDb actually listed the artist for this poster, which they don't usually do. Yeah. And it's uh, John Alvin, who was born in Hyannis, Massachusetts. Oh, wow. And he's pretty famous for uh, doing these gorgeous teaser posters for like E.T., Hook, Gremlins, and all the 90s wow. Disney ones, Little oh. Mermaid and on. Yeah. And uh, this one is no different. It's pretty iconic, I think. Yeah, it's pretty good looking. It's good, yeah. Absolutely. They could show Ernest in a spooky forest or in the dark or with the troll, but no, it's... Scared stupid. This is Halloween. It's got to be a pumpkin. I like how the the story of this movie isn't too generic. It could have been zombies. It could have been any number of like rote things, but they went with trolls yeah. and they made it feel like it belonged in like the South. When was the last time you'd seen this? Oh, before I watched it last week, you know, 20 plus years. Easy. Okay. How did it hold up? What was it like? I, I fell in love with it all over again. I'm going to watch it again. Uh, I, I I ripped it to my computer. I'm going to probably watch it on the plane ride home. <laughs> I'm going to watch it again oh, with my children. I now you were watching it through the eyes of your children, th right? and that's true. Like, I mean, is this I, something you'd put on with people your own age? I think so. Like, I think this would be a a perfect uh, silent at a party movie, or you know, low oh, at a party I agree. movie. If, sure. if you have a a Halloween movie playlist and you're having people over this is a great one. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this is this is one of those gems that I, I It's so weird to me that people have never heard of the Ernest movies or aren't into them because they were so prolific They were everywhere for 10 years almost got burned out the one thing about the look of this movie now that you bring it up and we haven't touched on this yet Oh, yes, the shutter speed the shutter speed the whole the whole movie. Well, let me let me ask you something because it's something I noticed immediately 
uh, is uh, this movie seems to have a very high shutter speed at all times. All times. That every motion is very crisp. No blur. No blur. Were the other Ernest movies like that? No. no. Not one. No. I, I think my, this is just a theory. <laughs> I think after Jail did well, but maybe it was, a, it came in a little under expectations. I think it made about as much as Christmas. Um, they, they clearly got the memo. You got to tool the next one more towards kids. And they probably had like two months. They probably jumped into it and said, okay, how do we make it more kid friendly? Okay. Make it more about the kids. Okay. Well, so, so how does the shutter speed tie into that? The shutter speed makes it more attention grabbing. It's like almost commercial logic. Make it, it's like a lot of modern music videos still do this and they just jack up the shutter speed. It's the so, saving private Ryan effect. For it's, those it's a, it yeah. makes things violent looking. Um, but I think it was done to be attention grabbing and to make it look a little more intense and scary. What I, my thought was, uh, someone in the production thought like, oh, this is, so this is the modern Charlie Chaplin. Well, let's make it look like an old, uh, silent movie that's, you know, under cranked and, yeah. and yeah, this is, this effect always to me looks like something's in fast motion, even yeah. when it's not. Yeah. And that makes sense for certain earnest slapstick moments. That's the, that's the weird thing. Like it, it would even make sense for some like earnest vamps to the camera moments where you really want to capture every nuance that his rubber face makes but every single shot it's weird like it'd be like when like the badger scene and goes to camp do yeah. do it then yeah. but when he's like talking to somebody about like driving his truck like, <laughs> like, like you know what? maybe this movie was like way ahead of the game and they shot it 48 frames per second like the hobbit <laughs> and they buried that yeah <laughs> actually that makes sense because john cherry is a pseudonym for james cameron so ryan i have printed out some of the imdb trivia that i found to be suspect uh everything down here if you want to read it out for me i see here all right from IMDb, the most trustworthy source of information. Mm -hmm. The pizzas seen being thrown at the bullies who try to attack the kids' treehouse mm -hmm. are reused props from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. Absolutely untrue. Does, why would that doesn't make any sense? Why would someone they're <laughs> real the pizza? <laughs> either either they would use a real pizza, which is eight dollars, five dollars. No, they're definitely pizza. not using. It is fake pizza. In this it, movie. It's probably fake pizza. But what what evidence do you have? Was like, oh, my uncle worked on that movie and did the props. <sighs> like what? How do you it's come probably up? someone watched those two movies back to back in 1992 as a kid, mm. and they made that connection as a dumb kid, <laughs> and they've just been dying to tell someone about this. Uh, this exclusive scoop that they have on it, this movie. It and feels it finally... like something, yeah, that a 90s kid would, like, bluff before yeah. there was an internet to do yeah, fact-checking yeah. and due yeah. diligence. Just, just, you know, that's the same pizza, because both movies have pizza. You're right! They <laughs> both <laughs> have pizza! <laughs> Mandela effect. <laughs> you don't need to be Woodward right. and Bernstein to get to the case here. <laughs> Number two is a good right. one. Quote, Many people believe that the meme, Troll Face, came from this film. There's, okay, I I kind of get the history of this one, and that's like his finest mugging in probably the whole series. Uh -huh. Like like he looks Great like face. looks gremlin like. Do, do you know do you know the meme like the like yeah the, yeah. 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 yeah, it's kind of like that ish, I <laughs> yeah. guess. Probably bullshit, but I could see why some of <laughs> it's conjecture. I don't think <laughs> it's Shepard Fairey <laughs> making Andre the Giant into a cultural like no, I I. If that is the source of it, then shame on them because Jim Varney <laughs> deserves better. <laughs> Point number three, quote, along with Mr. Bean and Pee Wee Herman, Ernest P. Worrell is considered to be one of the greatest family entertainers of all time. That's an opinion, and I think you're right. Absolutely. True. But it's, it's not okay. trivia. It's not trivia. It's, yeah, it's, it's not trivia. This makes you That's feel good. That's just a take. Why, yeah. why are you kind of writing nice. trivia? Like, why are you trying to squeeze blood out of the stone and write trivia on IMDb? You know what? Like, they, they probably clicked the wrong button. That was supposed to be a review. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That All right, so that. This, this next one is my absolute favorite. All right. Ready? If I, <clears throat> Headstones are seen in this film's poster, but there is no cemetery in the film itself. It is speculated by fans that the antagonist Trantor the Troll was originally supposed to dig up dead children to feed his army, and Ernest was a caretaker for a cemetery. This theory hasn't been confirmed, but would seem likely. <laughs> Not the to who? It Why would seem could... likely. This is rated PG. They're not... Digging up dead children. Like, now you're just inserting your own fan fiction into yeah. the trivia. You weirdo. Like, I, you know what? I bet that's Thank not you. even... By the way... <laughs> I bet one guy thinks that. Yeah. And he's and trying to... He got into an argument on the Ernest forums, and he's trying to... <laughs> no. 
<laughs> Save face. So he wrote He's an trying IMDb. to astroturf yeah. his way into this He video. wrote it on IMDb, waited a week, and then brought the argument back up. Like, well, let's just check IMDb. <laughs> oh, look, oh, it's look right here. there. Yeah. Man. Eat this shit, Oral Fan 2. This is not the cover of the Beatles' Abbey Road. Can I just say that if they were to make an Ernest Scared Stupid 2, I would love him to be a grave digger and fight spooky skeletons. Mm. Yep. Sure. Yeah, sure. I'd see that. That'd be great. That. That'd be great. So I'm gonna start working on that. That's my thought. Uh, I was talking about this earlier. In, in the alternate universe where Jim Varney was cast in Evil Dead 2, uh, <laughs> Bruce Campbell died in the mid 80s. Yeah. Jim Varney tried out for the role and got it. That movie still works, right? Oh hell yeah. 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 Hundred percent. Yeah. Like no one else could do it except maybe Jim Varney. Yes. <laughs> except for of course John Hamm. Except ooh. John Hamm. Because he can do anything. Yes. And John Hamm, I think, could play Ernest if they were to reboot I it. I would in just a that, heartbeat. Just that, put that out there to yeah. his agent if he's watching. <laughs> yes. Come on, Ham man. <laughs> Someone sees John Hamm, ask him, hey, it's been rumored that you're gonna be in the upcoming Ernest reboot. I just want to see the look in his face. So at the end of every episode of Ernest Roulette, we look through the entire world filmography to rank the movies in order from worst to best. Of the ones that we've watched so far. Of the ones we've seen. Yeah. We're five movies in. Mm -hmm. You have decided to abstain from voting. I, I feel privileged to be here as a guest, but I don't feel qualified. I I'm not a certifiable Ernest expert as you three are. Well, we're certifiable, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to abstain from voting. Uh, though, if it were up to me, Ernest Scared Stupid. We're going to start from the bottom of the ladder and decide, is the current movie better than movie, like, in the fourth spot, third, and ascend up the ladder. Okay, feel, free so, to, feel free to weigh in. Yeah. Please. So, Dr. Otto and the Riddle of the Gloom Beam, is this movie better than that? Yes. Yes. Yes, okay. Next up, we got, uh, Ernest Goes to Camp. Is this a better movie than Ernest Goes to Camp? I've been yes. wrestling I, with this I, for I, a week. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I watched Ernest... Sure. Yeah. Well, That's I thought the, the dump truck was funny. I, like, was funny. I, I don't know, like... Well, well, like, we're gonna have to address this. True. There can't be a tide for first. Ernest is funny. Right, I like Ernest. Like I don't. I like remember the going. Children. Oh, <laughs> no. we, we, uh, just all right, show so, me the Ghostbusters. Like, I don't care about the card. Like you're nervous. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. My my gut Jim is not a racist, better. but he made a bad decision. Like, hey. like, 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 okay, so beat. I'm gonna say a disclaimer here. So if you're watching this. <laughs> I just cut out like 20 minutes of us not being able to figure out how to rank this movie it's and true. a lot of our uh, a lot of our assumptions previously have kind of been thrown into question as well. Yeah. So I'm calling it here. We are going to abstain from ranking in this episode. We'll come back to it next episode. We'll figure our shit out <laughs> and we'll post the discussion as a bonus video just yeah, so you why can not? know what we're uh, what we're you know dealing with this here. isn't for show. This isn't yeah. like us goofing. We have to eat at some point too. Yeah, yeah we're, we're hungry. Flight. We need to clean up uh, <laughs> Let's just say this is in the top three Yes, yes. Yeah, it's an important earnest movie absolutely and not just because of childhood nostalgia for spooky comedy movies It 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 matters more if you've seen the previous earnest movies too. I'd say yeah, honestly um you know, as luck would have it, the wheel has had us watch all the movies in chronological order, and that is actually a really good way to watch them because they really kind of they jump back and forth, but they are trying to figure out the formula, and it's really interesting to watch them finally land on this movie. And it's funny to watch like the film stock get better every movie. Have <laughs> yeah. you guys oh, noticed yeah. that? Like every one of them looks declaratively better than oh, the previous yeah. one. Like oh, it's like is a better looking movie. Like I don't think I'd have the soft spot in my heart for Doctor Otto if it looked. Like, if I saw what it really looked like. <laughs> so there you have it. At the end of episode five, we haven't ranked not just this movie, but the entirety of the canon. It's been thrown into question. All bets are off. This episode was mean. too long. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, this has been a, a real weird time. Uh, I, I kind of I kind of thought we'd sit down and talk earnest, and uh, we got a little emotional, and we got a little real. And I think we're all better people, but worse adults. I think having you here really threw us off. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sorry, and it will never happen again. You flew across a time zone to do this, and this is the best we could do. Is Sounds magical when you say it that way. Fail to rank earnest movies after two hours of <laughs> deliberation. deliberation. Yeah. All right, that's probably, we, that's a good cutting point. Yeah. <laughs>